Uh, hi guys, a few days ago I made a video about the Intel B580. Specifically, I want to use the car for, for machine learning stuff like running large language models and do fine tuning and some kind of training, like something like that. And I found that that car uh, was quite good uh, with regards to machine learning tasks. And today, um, at CES, NVIDIA introduced the RTX 50 series and some of the claims are quite uh, quite outrageous. Uh, for example, it claimed um, it, it claimed that the RTX 5070 can perform as well as an um, RTX 4090. And in fact, I had this car 4090 before. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video, I recently sold it. Uh, the reason I sold that car uh, is because I I couldn't find a use case for that. And in fact, the claims we're seeing today reminded me the reason I purchased my 1490 for the exact same reason. Um, let me let me go into the details to show you guys what that means. Uh, let's go. So let's go through some of the NVIDIA slides and let's go to the first one. So NVIDIA compare uh, 5090 with RTX 4090 and as you can see that um, 5 out of the 7 workloads 5090 has twice the performance of 4090. The reason for this uh, performance difference is because if we look at their footnotes, it says that flux.dev FP8 on 40 series and FP4 on 50 series. So that's that's regarding these workloads. So that means running some generative AI tasks. Okay. So I think the reason for the differences is because we 50 series card it supports FP4 um, for the inference. So if you guys don't know what uh, what FP4 means, it means floating point four bits, and FP8 is floating point eight bits. Okay. So that means with FP8 you can represent one floating point number with 8 bits of binary numbers, okay? So obviously, because the length of FP8 is twice of the length of FP4, so RTX 5090 supports FP4, that means for those workloads that require AI, you can have twice the throughput as the 40 series. So say if the 40 series, like 4090, also supports FP4, we will expect the difference will be minor, like minor improvements. That's the reason to explain that uh, why we're seeing such difference. Um, and when you look at some of the uh, benchmarks for gaming, when they show the large large performance difference, it's because they activated DLSS and full ray tracing. And for those functions, they are based on deep learning models. So obviously, if you're running those uh, functions with lower precision floating point number, you will expect uh, um, the, the performance can be higher, provided your hardware support uh, can support the lower precision numbers. Okay. So basically, that explains the difference between um, the 40 series and 50 series. I think the main difference is that they um, with 50 series, it supports FP4. And I remember when I purchased, when I purchased um, my 4090 card, um, one of the reasons was that at that time, 4090 supported FP8 and 3090 only, support, only supports FP16. 
So I was thinking, maybe with uh, machine learning stuff, with FP8, I can get twice of the performance as uh, FP16. But in fact, uh, once you do machine learning, and especially when you do training, uh, fine tuning or whatever, okay, you will realize that usually you will train your model at higher precision like uh, FP16 or FP32. So in, in such scenarios, the difference between my 4090 and 3090 are, are non-existent. So that, that's the main reason I sold my, I sold my 4090s. Okay. And again, regarding uh, 5090s, the, uh, it's, uh, it's more the case because I don't think people train models with um, FP4. Okay, so that's that, that doesn't make any sense. They train model at much higher precision. Okay, so the FP4 is mainly for inference. So if you run, uh, if you try to run local models, and the models are, are quantized to uh, four bits, uh, I think uh, 5090 is a good car. Um, but but if we use it for machine learning, uh, like training and stuff like that. I I had my question, so I, I don't think it's worthwhile to upgrade, especially from 4090s. Oh, it really depends on depends on your use cases. Okay, um, let's compare those numbers with the Intel B580. Um, yeah, let's go back to the computer. Uh, we can discuss a bit more about uh, the NVIDIA slides. Okay. So it also says that the 5070 is as good as a 4090. So I guess people who purchased 4090's cards, 4090's um, cards are going to be mad. Okay, but but hold on, you don't need to be stressed. Okay, let's look at this slide. Okay, when they say the compare, when they compare uh, fifty seventy to forty nineties, I think what it means that they mean this number. One thousand AI tops. Obviously, in this case, the AI tops is AP four. Okay, maybe. A better comparison is um, because we're talking about machine learning. A better comparison will be converts um, this number to FP sixteen. So this, if this one is FP four, and from FP four to FP eight will be one thousand divided by two. Okay. And then from FP8 to FP16, we can divide that by 2 again. That will give us um, the FP16 performance, which is 250. And if we look at these numbers, if we compare this number with 4090, okay. so we can see that with 4090, the, the FP FP16 performance is 330 tops. Okay, it's still higher than than 250, which is which is this one, which is RTX 5070. I think with FP16, um, 4090 uh, has higher performance, much higher performance than um, 5070. So I think if we use your car for training, you don't need to worry too much about that. Okay, uh, you don't need to worry too much about the RTX 50 series. Let's look at uh, how Intel performs in this case. Okay, so I downloaded the the Intel press kit for the B580 card. Okay. And we can search at P16. Okay.
and we can see here um, the the functional block that handling those uh, calculations is the XE matrix extensions. Okay, because we a large language models, uh, we are mainly dealing with matrix applications, um, multiplications to be exact. So, as you can see here, it only supports in two, in four, in eight, and FP sixteen. Okay. So it doesn't support uh, FP8 or FP, F, uh, FP4. And I also, f I also found this article, a recent, like uh, an article written actually today about the Intel Batomage graphic cards. And it lists the tables of all the cards or unreleased cards in this series. So for B5080 and the, the floating point performance, uh, especially, especially with the FP16, is uh, 117, okay. So in this case, it will be um, much less than much less than uh, 5070. With 5070, based on our calculations, we think um, the FP16 performance will be around 250. That, that's my guess. I still don't know the exact, exact details of the NVIDIA card. Okay. And in the brackets, that's the int 8 performance. So you can see it's double the performance. Okay. Um, but it's also interesting. Um, we the table also lists the B seven hundred seventy card, and the FP sixteen performance is one hundred and eighty seven. So it's much higher than the B five eighty. So I think at this level, it's it's comparable with fifty seventy. Okay, I think for Intel. Um, they also need to implement uh, lower precision. Um, they also need to support lower precision calculations in their silicon. So, like with, like supporting FP8 and FP4, and they might not be useful for training, but they can be useful for doing inference tasks. Like you can, you can use those to run um, local large language models. No problem with that, and. And hence, like some of the claims in NVIDIA's presentation, like they have a small PC that it claims you can do a lot of tops. I think they mainly mean that like FP4. Uh, if you convert that to FP16, that's comparable with um, Battlemage card, a Battlemage, Intel Battlemage cards. But Intel need to support lower precision in in their in their cards, okay, just for inferencing. But, but if you're using your car for training, doesn't matter, it's training for um, large language models or fine tuning. Like you, um, or you can or use your car for training uh, computer vision models. Um, I don't think uh, FP8 and FP4 uh, matters much in, in this scenario. So you can you can pretty much ignore that. Um, they sounds good, but in terms of actual use case, I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's much about relevance to for training for training tasks. Okay, um, that's about it. That's about um, how I feel about the Nvidia release um, in conjunction with the B five eighty and. After seeing the information from the NVIDIA, from the NVIDIA uh, presentation, um, I still think the B580 is, uh, is a very strong product to consider if you want to use it for machine learning stuffs, stuffs. Um, And I also hope that Intel can introduce um, a large um, model variance for the B580. And 
as I mentioned earlier, even though um, the the FP16 performance might not be very high in comparison with NVIDIA's offering, but usually when we when we use the car for training or for inference, um, the memory capacity is a major limitation. And so with more memory, we can fit a large model in, um, in the graphic card. That will really speed up the computation. Because if even you have a NVIDIA 5070, even it has a like a fast chip, okay, but the memory capacity is limited, maybe 12 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes, I don't know, okay. In that case, you might need to visit uh, the system memory every now and then, and they're just not efficient. It's better to put everything into the GPU memory and then run your workload. So that's why I think um, large memory capacity is more important than, than the raw performance. That's all I want to say for this video. If you guys find this content interesting, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, definitely, I will try to put up more videos about uh, um, machine learning, large language models, and, and relevant hardware um, in the future. And thanks guys for watching. See you.